On the table today, two very requested LEGO Minecraft sets by you, The Skeleton Dungeon and The Abandoned Village. Hey everyone, welcome to Squirrel Stampede. Thank you much for watching today. I am Dan. We are going to build two LEGO Minecraft builds today. Two very interesting builds that are Fall 2022 and lots of interesting characters, skeletons, and zombies inside. So let's not dawdle and get to these builds before we get... Oh! hit by a arrow from a skeleton. Ow. Squirrel Stampede! Let's begin the build with LEGO Minecraft set number 21189, The Skeleton Dungeon. 364 pieces with minifigures, cave employee, no, cave explorer. Nice, yellow suited Splunker with two skeletons, one with enchanted armor. Gots to say I always enjoy a good dungeon build. I think we've kind of seen this a few times in various arrangements. This one themed more after a lush cave. We have a skeleton spawner, that's fun, and hanging spore blossom. Gots to get one of those. Now is that cat? I sure like listening to the music styles of cat. Inside the box, one set of instructions. Bag one of pieces. Bag two of pieces. And bag three. Can't wait to see that spore blossom build. Agreed, Landry. Let's begin this build. And constructed, we have a small slice of a skeleton dungeon. And I'm going to explore it. That you will, Cave Explorer. But it's not just a slice of a skeleton dungeon, it's also a slice of a lush cave. Over onto this side, we've got the azalea bushes up top, water falling down with a spore blossom underneath this caving. Something that could have been represented a little bit larger. I would have liked to have seen a larger lush cave option versus a skeleton dungeon, which we've kind of seen a few variants of the spawning cage in different arrangements, but I talk too much. There is also a nice little example of a dripstone cave over in this corner. They've really packed a lot into this small little slice. We've got stalactites, maybe some copper ore back there, some interesting things, and of course, Skeletons! Hey, my name's Gronk! Oh, hi Gronk. And if you can peer away, over here we have a working skeleton spawner. By rotating this dial, you can see inside a little skeleton skull spin about inside ever so often. There it goes, right there, right there, and continues on. Always fun to build the little spawner cages. So what else do we have with this cave? Gronk, she's in position! Pull the lever, Gronk! All right, I got this. Wrong lever. So I think what Gronk was supposed to do in this really shady Emperor's New Groove bit from like 20 years ago is like pull this uh, lever back here 
thus breaking apart the uh, dripstone cave. Huh. I may have constructed poorly though, something's going on inside there. These blocks are supposed to slide out, what happened in here? This lever has been so catchy. Look at that, it's not even pulling in the stick. Oh my, quick time of rebuild. Okay, everyone back into position. I think what happened was I forgot to put a little round sleeve cuff around the post inside, thus the rod falling off and then failing the action feature. So once again, our cave explorer is standing precariously on top of the dripstone cave area. Then if Gronk had pulled the appropriate lever, this one, we would have some sort of dripstone avalanche. Still not working perfectly. It's a little clumsy. I've seen this work better in previous sets. Uh, I don't know why they designed it the way they did. It's a little clunky, uh, the way they fall. Maybe it's just something to experiment with. Less with skeletons, right? Anyhow, a really tough way to go. I'm not dead. You really are a rough and tough caver, aren't you? Well, why don't you explore that back corner? Tell us what it's all about. All right, now it may be just a little bit of child's play as I've worked caving all my life. You see, it's a simple revolving door where in which, whoops! Ow! Ow! Ah! Ah, my legs! Well, that didn't go well at all. I thought you were an experienced caver. Well, we've got this secret revolving door with an enchanted armor skeleton back there. I think it's supposed to kind of show the trick of a spawning skeleton. So like, you know, this is the skeleton spawner and then a skeleton appearing out of nowhere. It's kind of clunky too. I wish there was a dial or something. You kind of have to activate it by yourself by just moving these walls, if I am correct. I don't really see, you know, if there was a little dial or something, a little extra to maybe kind of do it from the side would have been kind of cool. But, you know, it's okay. Again, they've really packed in a lot here, so it's pretty interesting. Pretty good display piece, I would say. Over into this chest over here, we have a disc, possibly cat, not sure. A piece of bread or cooked pork, whatever you want to believe, I think a bone, with the nice new flat chest design. And of course, the prize jewel of this set, the hanging spore blossom. Let's just take that down and take a look real quick. There's our beautiful spore blossom that you can take back to your squirrel mansion, place onto your ceiling, and then have spores flying all over your squirrel mansion. Cute little display set. I think it could have used at least one axolotl included. I think that would have really enhanced it. Putting an axolotl right there would have been fun. I like the fact that we have three skeletons. I did not see that coming. Now that I'm reading the box, it does say two basic skeletons included, along with the enchanted armor skeleton, so that's a pretty good deal. A couple extra skeletons, and again, it's just a nice little slice of a skeleton dungeon lush cave. Have not seen many lush caves around. Oh, there's my legs. How did they get over here? I'm done with ye haunted skeleton cave. Ugh. Yeah, good idea. Don't cave over there. Okay, next build to feature Lego Minecraft set number 21190, The Abandoned Village, with 422 pieces. With two zombie villagers, one with that awesome farming hat, and a zombie hunter. Kind of fun. With a black cat. Always like the cat builds. Kind of small. They cut a lot of corners. Even the house looks a little stumpy. But there's some villagey things going on here. Inside the box, instructions for the build. A little more pieces with this set. With bag one, bag two, bag three, and bag four. So let's begin the construction of the village abandonment.
And constructed we have the abandoned, the abandoned village. 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 Kind of an interesting set here. Not really a full blown build, but a series of mini builds to kind of add on to other existing sets in a way. There's just not enough village here to be called an abandoned village. I suppose if you picked up maybe two or three of these sets, then surely you would have an abandoned village. Right now it's more just like your abandoned neighbors. It's a good set though to kind of add on to what we just built today. It kind of works and flows into the skeleton dungeon, and it also kind of flows into some of the other sets we built and constructed this year. There's a lot of themes of these little islands, I guess you could call them. We saw that in the Llama Village and a few other sets where you can kind of take these islands and move them around and change your village in how you want it to look. So the primary feature of this build would be the abandoned village main house here. <laughs> who seems to be guarded by a very grumpy black cat. Now the village house feels a little stumpy in the way the roof goes all the way almost to the ground, but I guess in reality it's about the same as a normal Minecraft house. That roof just throws you. Uh, there's the door height of a person. Uh, I suppose it could have gone one block higher they kind of used some tricks to save some pieces maybe, although this roof takes a lot of pieces. Look at all those brown bricks building up this set. Nice little window in the back. We can remove the roof, of course, and see inside we've got a nice uh, stone cutting table. I always like to place those uh, by my bed for some reason. Kind of makes this great looking pillow device, I, I don't know. Uh, there's our blue cyan bed, by the way. Not much going on in here because it's abandoned. They even have this really nice web door. I like the web door. That's pretty funny. Jack-o'-lanterns up front. It's been over a year, I think, since I've encountered a, an abandoned village in gameplay, a full-on village. And I can't remember if there's jack-o'-lanterns as much. That would surely help help identify. I know the webbing always identifies it pretty easily, but the jack-o'-lanterns really do. We've got a nice little pumpkin farm patch here. I think that turned out really well. Uh, that's a cool way of growing pumpkins. I've never set it up like that. Would the pumpkins then grow onto the water tiles? Like, I don't know how this one would work. This one would grow onto the dirt. That would make sense. This pumpkin would never grow, though. It would not be able to grow onto the water, right? It may accidentally grow onto this one, right? Destroying that one? I don't know, that's kind of weird. It's a weird setup, I'm, I'm looking at that weird. Uh, then we have a nice little foundry over here with a blast furnace in the back and uh, some diamond armor, which is pretty nice. Uh, can you find diamond armor in an ab abandoned village now? I don't know. That would be a cool find, to find a, both a helmet and a uh, chest plate. And then we have a nice little target practice piece here which I also am unfamiliar of seeing very often in gameplay, maybe towards the pillagers' village more often. And then we have a nice little outpost here for our vampire hunter. What's interesting about this little piece here is they've hidden a door underneath. I was so curious, what was this? Was it a root cellar? What were they trying to do? But I think all this really is is a place to hide a door, and then you can remove the webbing from your abandoned village house and place a door on there so now it's no longer abandoned it's been moved in by said vampire hunter did i just say vampire hunter zombie hunter we watched a lot of vampire movies this halloween i think there's our zombie hunter minifigure pretty cool i like how she's got like this belt maybe some stakes or something in there some tools of the trade for taking out a zombie or vampire? Are there vampires in Minecraft? Well, that would be kind of cool. And over onto the back there of this, oh, she's got kind of a sword or something, shovel, belted onto her back, pink hair. While we're close up, let's take a look at that splunking figure too we saw earlier. I think I like the splunking figure better. The bright yellow is pretty fun. The headlamp and over on the back, kind of a backpack tool with some sticks or something in there. So pretty cool minifigures of the day. I really like the new skins we're seeing this year. They've been fun. But the abandoned village is kind of just a hard set to live on its own as, again, it's just pieces and parts that you may place into your overall Minecraft world. I would suggest going with the Dungeon Skeleton Cave first, or a few other sets actually of the 2022 sets, as I think there's a little more play value in those. These two sets, though, work pretty well together, though. They're smaller scale, so they're a little easier to afford, thus giving you an easier chance to combine the two. Uh-oh, zombie hunter. Here comes a zombie. Do something, do something. 
I like your hat. It matches my caving gear. Thanks. Good distraction, zombie hunter. Even better distraction, human hunting cat. So I enjoyed these two builds. They are available 2022 here in the fall. What do you think about the skeleton dungeon and the abandoned village Lego Minecraft? Two very interesting mid-sized builds today. I think I like out of the two the best, the skeleton dungeon. Just feels like a more complete, displayable, playable set. But the abandoned village is fun too. If you liked today's video, please give us a squake, a squirrel eye, squamit your favorite set. Thank you so much for watching today. That's what I have to say about that.